Good morning, and welcome to your daily Farm and Home Show, brought to you by the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service. And now, here's your host. Good morning, I'm Joanna Coles, and all week long, we're gonna be talking about water with Dr. Amanda Gumbert. She's at the University of Kentucky Extension Water Quality Specialist. That's Thanks right. for being here with us well, today, Amanda. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about all of our segments this week. I yes. am too, and one of the first ones, we're gonna talk about the water quality plan. And you know, we had a, a real concentrated effort when this first came out to make sure that all the landowners got signed up. But right. there's some new ones and it probably needs to be updated. Absolutely, so what we're talking about um, is if you own a farm or you manage property or you lease a farm even, um, every property that's 10 acres or more in size needs a water quality plan. And that's to conform with the state law, mm -hmm. um, the Kentucky Agriculture Water Quality Act. Um, and so it's pretty easy to do that. Now the law's been around since um, 1994, mm -hmm. so a little while. Uh, and so some of our farmers have probably developed plans like you mentioned. We were very um, active in making sure farmers knew um, what their plan was and, and developing a plan for their farm, um, but that is still in place. Mm -hmm. Some people think maybe it went away. It didn't go away. <laughs> uh, we're probably as concerned now, uh, maybe more than ever, mm -hmm. about water quality issues. And, um, and so it's a way for our farmers to show that they're doing the right thing on the land for water quality. And you know, a lot of times it's just a good reminder about some of the things that we might can implement on our farm, because things change on our farm, practices change, right. we might add a livestock species or something like that. Right. And that would be a perfect time to go in and just revisit that plan. Absolutely, so my rule of thumb is every two years. Mm -hmm. I figure that every two years you maybe have bought a new piece of property, a new track, or you've maybe sold a track, or maybe changed your um, practice in some way, shape, or form. I know a lot of our farmers um, transitioned out of tobacco mm -hmm. and into livestock practices. Um, we actually have um, a little prop for us um, to look at. Um, sometimes I think our farmers get intimidated or they feel like somebody's, you know, it's big brother mm -hmm. telling them what to do. Um, but really, I think it's an opportunity for us to really look at our practices, um, look at our farm, and take an account of what's going on. And a lot of these practices make really good sense agriculturally. Right, and I mean, wise. the grazing stick, I mean, just talking about not overgrazing, applying fertilizer properly, it is some of the things that we're already doing, but it might have some best management practices in there that maybe we haven't thought of, or maybe we wanna try on our farm. And I think Absolutely. that's what great is great about this plan, is you, you got, I know you've worked with it in the Conservation District about making it very step-by-step Right. And easy to fill out. Absolutely. And so um, I think we have an image on the screen for you to see that um, you can use a workbook. We have a mm -hmm. producer's workbook. Um, it's essentially yes and no questions that you answer about how, you know, what's going on on your farm. One of those questions I want to point out with our grazing stick, one of the questions is, do you overgraze your pastures? Mm -hmm. And so if you have livestock, that's one of the questions. And all of my farmers always laugh and they go, well, it depends. <laughs> and that's really the answer, right? It depends on what time of year it is. If it's, you know, late spring and we've had ample rainfall and the temperatures are warming up, our pastures look really great, um, then we know we've got a lot of vegetation, plenty of forage, and so we haven't overgrazed. Now, by the end of the summer, mm -hmm. if we've had a, a dry spell and maybe our vegetation is not um, where it needs to be, we've overstocked a little bit, because you know those profit margins are pretty tight and we have a tendency to put too many animals on too small of a space. Mm -hmm. um, so using rotational grazing as an example is one way that we can protect water quality but get a production benefit. And so that's what the grazing stick helps us do, helps us decide when we should move animals from one field to the next. Absolutely. And those are the practices that are on here. Now, where can they go to maybe revisit their plan? So we have um, online tools through the Cooperative Extension Service. They can come to your office mm -hmm. and ask for those. Um, also, the local conservation district. Um, every county conservation district um, is equipped with information um, as well as um, some Somebody usually there on staff to help out, to help a farmer either walk through the plan or give them those resources. So um, they can also call call me. So um, 
uh, we have some folks that on state staff to help develop those plans. And there's so. some cost share programs to help with some of these best management practices. So it's probably just good, like you say, every two years, or if you own 10 acres, maybe you're a new landowner, to go ahead and get that plan established and get get that on file. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, cost Amanda, shares. certainly thank you for the information today. And if you have questions about a water quality plan, make sure to contact your local extension office or the local conservation district. Thanks for watching and have a great day. If you have questions about today's topic, please call the Warren County Extension Office at the number on your screen. Thanks for watching and have a great day.